Well, David Brody is our CBN News chief political analyst, and uh, he joins us now from Washington. David, you had a unique experience. You had that luncheon with the president. You were sitting next to him. Tell us what happened. Right, Pat. It was uh, pretty neat. <laughs> uh, off the record, it was a network anchor luncheon. Basically, uh, CBN and CNN and NBC, ABC, all of them around uh, the table there in the Roosevelt Room of the White House. Uh, the president there, the vice president there, and it was all before uh, his Oval Office address, basically trying to kind of spin his way through uh, what he wanted, uh, to, his message that he wanted to get out to the anchors. And so uh, it was off the record. I can't specifically say what he said. I will just say it was a a very interesting experience, and I will, I, what I can tell you, and I, I, I did talk to the White House about this this morning, so, so it's okay to say, but the, the president actually, I was sitting next to the president, to the left of the president, George Stephanopoulos was to his right, the president looks over at me right before the luncheon and says, do you mind saying a word of prayer? Will you say a prayer for us? And of course, I took the, I took the opportunity to do it and said it in Jesus' name. Uh, David, uh, it looks like the supporters of the president think that the uh, Democrats are trying to use the term, if I can say, to roll him and to force him to make concessions that will be damaging to him politically. How do you think the thing's shaping up? Pat, I think you're right on the money here. That's exactly what they're trying to do. And let me take it a step further. We've heard about these eight or nine appropriations bill. The reason I say nine is if you include DHS and all of that, that's nine appropriations bills. But the Democrats are keep saying to Donald Trump, just look, let's get eight of them at least going. We'll, we'll argue about DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, in the next month or so. But let's at least get eight uh, signed so we can get pretty much all of the government back up and running. And Donald Trump's like, no way, I'm not going to do it. And the reason is, uh, it, it, when you talk to folks inside the White House, they say, look, we lose the leverage at that point. That's what they're saying. I mean, why in the world uh, would they sign eight appropriation bills and then all you have left is DHS? And at that point, there's no guarantee that Democrats will come to the table anyhow because they're already on record saying they're not going to give one dollar for the wall. And I think that's part of the problem here. Well, is there any uh, common ground? You know, for example, the doc of those dreamers, there should be a deal made on them. They, they, if the Democrats could give something to the president, so he's, he, but if they just try to strip him and make him look weak, he's going to, he's not going to give in. But is there some common ground they could negotiate on? Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Pat, you bringing up DACA, because obviously we've heard that before, and the White House never rules it out or rules it in. Uh, they're kind of leaving it a bit on the table, uh, which suggests to me it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out if they're not ruling it in or out, then it's in play. And look, if you're the Democrats, how in the world are you not jumping at that opportunity? You're going to give Donald Trump some money for the wall, if you will, uh, in return for codifying uh, DACA, those dreamers, into law, something Obama never did. I mean, he, he went ahead from a, con or from, a, from a constitution standpoint. He said he was trying to do that from an executive order standpoint, but he never codified it into law. So how do you not take that deal if you're Democrats? Having said that, that could be one way out. Pat, I think the way where this is going, and I've said this for a couple of weeks now, I think you need to watch those Republicans in the Senate. Are they going to jump ship and basically turn on this president? And here's how I see it potentially going down. Look, the Democrats in the House have passed this bill, right? They're going to pass the bill to open up the government. You, in the Senate, McConnell's not going to bring it up because obviously he doesn't, he's not going to pass. But 47 Democrats, and eventually, as this time, go, time goes on, you need 13 Republicans for a total of 60 to get the bill passed. I think eventually you're going to see some Republicans in the Senate come out of the woodwork and say, enough already, let's open the government, and that'll be that. And at that point, I see Donald Trump vetoing that bill and then letting the Senate and the House override that veto to get the government back open. And at that point, it becomes a win politically for Donald Trump. He says, look, I veto the bill, and they overrode my veto, and let Republicans, those establishment Republicans that are okay with no wall funding, let them live with the political repercussions of that. Do you think, isn't that a little too, you know, uh, arcane for the average voter to understand what you just said? It, it may be. I'm still trying to figure it. No, no, I, I understand it, I think. <laughs> but look, Donald Trump has even said that he will veto any bill that comes to his desk. And look, he didn't say that uh, just willy-nilly. 
the House control is controlled by the Democrats. He knows this is kind of code for putting pressure on McConnell and the Senate to say, don't even think about bringing a bill on the floor that passes what the Democrats pass in the House because I'm going to veto it. We'll see. I think eventually, look, the, the question, I think, for both parties is what's the off ramp here uh, for the Democrats and for the Republicans? And I think the Republicans have uh, Donald Trump has given some concessions here. We've heard about Mike Pence going in and talking about, look, we'll take two and a half billion dollars, not five and a half billion dollars. Uh, and so there's been that. But the Democrats, they've got a left wing progressive base that uh, will not take uh, yes for an answer as it relates to wall funding. Uh, David, you know, this whole idea of uh, declaring a national emergency, he didn't do that last night, but he has absolutely authority as chief executive uh, under the Constitution to declare a national emergency and then use mm -hmm. money already appropriated for military right. construction. Uh, there's at least, what is it, $10, $10 billion or more in that budget that's already been appropriated he can use? Right. It's $10 billion on unused funds that go to the Army Corps of Engineers. And by the way, that's civilians, not the military, civilians who could build the wall. That would be the scenario under the National Emergencies Act that was packed, passed back in 1976. So, uh, look, the president can, can do that if he wants to. I think he's keeping it in his hip pocket uh, as a art of the deal strategy ploy to say, look, uh, if y'all don't come to y'all, listen to me, all y'all, that's what they say in the South. If you don't come to an agreement, I'll trot this out. No reason to burn that in the Oval Office address uh, on Tuesday night when you can have that as a leverage point going forward. He can do it. And, and as I see it, David, there is no, uh, no court in the country, uh, at least it's any responsible court, that would try to challenge him. It's, it, a court will not enter into the uh, domain of the chief executive in relation to foreign policy and military policy. They, yeah, that's a legislative thing, and even the Congress couldn't stop him. Well, it's laid out in Section 2808 uh, that he can do this. The question then becomes, what is the crisis specifically? Well, he'll talk about border security and all of that. But from a legal standpoint, will that hold up in court? Because you know the Democrats are going to challenge it. And uh, the White House is going to have to make that compelling case, not just in court if it goes that far, uh, but really to the American people, that this indeed is a crisis. And what we saw in that Oval Office speech last night was something we really haven't seen before for them for this president to really concentrate on the humanitarian side of this and cast this in moral terms, saying, look, it's immoral of the Congress to do nothing. Uh, and so I thought that was a different tack that he used uh, finally uh, Tuesday night from the Oval Office. I'll also say this. If you notice, he left the wall for the end. You know, he talked about border security and everything, you know, the cameras and, and this and that, more agents. And then he said, law enforcement professionals say, we need the wall. He never said, I want the wall. We need the wall. He's saying, look, this is what the experts are saying. And I thought that would help him from a public, a public relations standpoint with the American people. One last question. There are an estimated 12 million undocumented uh, aliens in the United States right now. Now, Bill de Blasio, mayor of New York, has said, I want to declare health care a right for every single person in New York, wherever they come from. Now, could Trump just pick up a whole bunch of those undocumented aliens and bring them into New York and say, OK, Bill, here they are? <laughs> well, leave it to Trump to possibly do that, for sure. Look, I think he, I'll be honest with you, Pat, I think he has obviously some bigger problems on his hands right now. I, I will say this, Bill de Blasio is representative of exactly what the Democrats are facing come 2020 in this big presidential campaign coming up, which is, this progressive left wing, I mean, they're out there, Pat. I mean, they want, what, Medicare for all. They want, uh, what, 70 percent tax rates on uh, once you hit $10 million. Look, it's, it's, it's out of control. And the question for Democrats that running in 2000 or 2020 is, uh, are they for any of this? And if they are, that might be their death knell politically because, look, that might appeal for the 23 percent of the country, but it doesn't appeal to the majority of Americans for sure. Right on, David. Thank you so much. David Brody, thank you for your insights. Isn't that interesting?